Warning, the following video contains disturbing material that may be inappropriate for younger viewers. Parental discretion is advised. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to the month of October Serial killer -thon. And on day 10, I give you Pedro Lopez. As you all might know, I'm having trouble getting my videos monetized on YouTube. So I need your help to share, like the video. Only if you like it, if not, let me know what I can do to make it better for you. And subscribe, because it did go up from 2.2. We're at a 7.9 right now, so thank you for that. But I know we can do better. And I have a shout out for the day. Here he is. And you can also get a shout out. Even if you want to grow on YouTube or anything, let me shout you out. I know I don't have that much subscribers or anything, but I, I'm here to help. So just comment down below with anything having to do with the video and I'll, and I'll choose from the comment section. Now, with that all being said, here's Pedro Lopez. Roll that intro. Pedro Lopez, the monster of the Andes, has a claim of being the most prolific serial killer of modern times. If his own unverified estimate of 300 victims is to be taken seriously, then only Harold Shipman can rival him for the sheer numbers of lives being brought to an untimely end. Pedro Lopez was born in Colombia in 1949, the seventh of 13 children born to a prostitute mother. At any time, this would have been a hard start in life. But in 1949, Colombia was going through what became known as La Violencia, a time of brutal lawlessness and civil war. Pedro's mother was a tyrannical figure, but he realized from a young age that home life was preferred than being out on the streets. When Pedro was eight years old, however, that is exactly where he found himself. His mother found him making sexual advances to a young sister and threw him out. The first person to take him in posed as a good Samaritan, but turned out to be a pedophile who sexually assaulted Pedro repeatedly before casting him back out on the streets. Utterly traumatized, the boy became feral and nocturnal, hiding in buildings and emerging at night to scavenge for food. He endured this existence for a year, when finally, there was an American couple who saw him begging on the streets, took pity on him and took him in. They gave him room and board and sent him to a local school for orphans. This good fortune didn't last, however. Age 12, Pedro ran away from school after breaking into the school's office and stealing money. He later claimed that this was a response to a teacher at the school making sexual adv advances to him. Whatever the reason, Pedro Lopez was soon back on the streets again. La violencia was over and it was a little bit easier to live. He was able to survive by a mixture of being a petty thief, building up in his mid-teens to a specialization in car theft. Age 18, he was finally arrested and sentenced to seven years in prison. After only two days there, he would be sexually assaulted by four of his fellow inmates. Lopez, however, was tired of being the victim. He constructed a homemade knife and the following week succeeded in killing three of his attackers. The prison authorities, little interested in the well-being of the inmates, added a mere two years to his sentence. By the time of his release, Lopez was a very angry and very dangerous individual with a major grudge against society and women in particular. He blamed his mother for everything that had gone wrong in his life. And on the day of his release, he started to take a perverse form of revenge and embarked on his two-year killing rampage. His targets were invariably young girls, mostly from Indian tribes, as he knew the authorities would be particularly uninterested in their fate, nor did he confine himself to Colombia. His murderous spree saw him following the Andes south to Peru and Ecuador. In Peru alone, he reckoned he had killed as many as a hundred girls before he was captured by Indians while attempting to abduct a nine-year-old girl. They were about to bury him alive when an American missionary intervened, persuaded them to hand Lopez over to the authorities. The authorities simply deported him back over the border of Ecuador to let him go. For the next year or so, Pedro Lopez moved back and forth between Ecuador and Colombia, killing with apparent impunity. The authorities did notice a case in missing girls, but generally put it down as slave traders. Then, in April 1980, there was a flash flood in Ecuador, and the bodies of four missing children were washed up. A few days later, still in Ecuador, a woman named Carvina Poveda spotted Lopez in the act of trying to abduct her 12-year-old daughter. She called for help. Lopez was overpowered and handed to the police. Lopez started to confide in the prison priest 
after a day of grisly confessions, the priest had to ask to be released, as he could not stand to listen anymore. The priest told the interrogators what he had learned. They put the new evidence to Lopez, and, be and he began to confess. He told them that he had murdered a hundred girls in Colombia, and at least 110 in Ecuador, and as many more than that in Peru. He expressed a particular enthusiasm in Ecuadorian girls, who said were much more innocent and trusting than Colombians, and stated a preference for murdering by daylight so he could see the life leave the victim's eyes as he strangled them. At first, the police weren't sure whether all this was anything more than the ravings of a madman. Preferring to be branded as a monster rather than a liar, Lopez said he would show them the burial sites. He was placed in leg irons and allowed to lead police to a site outside of Ecuador, where they found the remains of 53 girls. The police had now seen more than enough to convince them that Pedro Lopez was indeed the monster he claimed to be. Further detailed confession allowed prosecutors to charge Lopez with having committed 110 murders in Ecuador. He was duly sentenced to life in prison. In the unlikely event that he is ever released, he would have to stand trial in Colombia, where he would face the death penalty. Today, Lopez does not appear in any way remorseful. Rather, he seems to be proud of his crimes. I am the man of the century, he said in the most recent interview given from his prison cell. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you like it. Subscribe and comment who you think the next serial killer is going to be. And remember, if you comment, you have a chance to be on a daily shout out. And remember, you can reach me on Twitter and also have a Twitch channel that I play a few games from time to time. But I'm going to start playing a little bit more. So, until next time guys, sweet dreams.